Having a great weekend. How about that temperature dropping outside? It's amazing. Woo, going from 104 down to the 80s. I'm loving it. How about y'all? I want to say a welcome to all of those who are online joining us here at Believer's Church. We want to say that we love you. We are so glad that you're joining us as well. And we, we just want to say if you're ever in our area or you live in our area, we would love to have you to be a part of one of our services here in Twin Falls. God bless you. We just want you to know we're praying for you and we thank you for your love and your support and how you love God like crazy. So come see us and come hang out with us. I promise it's so much sweeter. For everybody who's in the room, we're so glad to have you here this morning. If you're a guest here for the first time at Believer's Church, we're so glad to have you. Come on, church, can we give a great big warm welcome to our guests online and as well in this room. If you would, sometime in the service, inside your worship guide that says, Welcome to Believer's Church, it's orange. If you would open that out, there's a connection.
Well, good morning, church, on this awesome day. It's so great to have everybody here. Sure do love you. Hope you're having a great weekend. How about that temperature dropping outside? It's amazing. Woo, going from 104 down to the 80s. I'm loving it. How about y'all? I want to say a welcome to all of those who are online joining us here at Believer's Church. We want to say that we love you. We are so glad that you're joining us as well. And we, we just want to say, if you're ever in our area, sure do or you, you love live, you. hope you're area, having a great we weekend. How about that to be a temperature part of one drop of our outside? It's Falls. amazing. God bless you. Woo, we just want you to know we're praying for you. Down and we thank to the you 80s. for I'm your love it. and how your about support y'all? and how you I love say God like crazy. So come see us and come hang out with us. I promise it's so much sweeter. For everybody who's in the room, we're so glad to have you here this morning. If you're a guest here for the first time at Believer's Church, we're so glad to have you. Come on, church, can we give a great big warm welcome to our guests? online and as well in this room. If you would, sometime in the service, inside your worship guide that says, Welcome to Believer's Church, it's orange. If you would open that out, there's a connection card there that's available for you. Also, it's available online or on our Believer's Church app as well. And if you wouldn't mind filling that out as much as you feel comfortable, and then sometime in the service, whether it's at the end of service in the buckets that we pass on uh, through the aisles to receive the tithe and offering, you can drop them in there. And we're going to send you a thank you card for being a part of our services in the morning. And we'd love for you to fill that out and drop it in the bucket. But if you feel more comfortable, we have an orange tent set up for all our new guests that are here in our service today. We have a gift available for you right after church. And this is why we do this, okay? The reason why we give gifts in our church is to let people know you are a gift, and we want to bless you. It's about giving to you, to equip you, to encourage you, to bless your life. That's why we do what we do. And from our church family, we're giving you that gift. And we just want to equip you. We have Bibles available after service. We have books available to help you in your spiritual growth. As well as we have small groups starting up next week. And if you've never been a part of our small groups, we want to bless you. Here it's about Church. giving to you. We just want you to, to know they're available you. online to sign up, as well as right after the service, our team's available to serve you. We have over 19 groups that are available for you to sign up with, and we love for you to be a part of it. It's going to be an awesome fall season, and this is why we do this, okay? It's so that a small church or a big church can uh, get a little smaller, and we can get in groups and know each other. This morning, we were having small community groups praying together during our worship service so that we pray together. Did you notice right after we got done praying, you guys couldn't stop being chatty with each other? Why? Because a church that prays together sticks together. A church that prays together and knows each other by name, man, you're family, and we want to know each other a little bit deeper, and we care about what's going on in people's lives just a little bit more, so it makes you in connectivity. Small groups is such a precious gift. I believe when people open up their homes or meet at coffee shops or whatever it might be, is that our opportunity to get to know each other, dive in God's word, pray for each other, be there for each other. So I want to encourage you to jump in a small group. Many of you are leading them. Thank you so much. Next Sunday, we'll pray over you guys, and we're going to believe for an awesome move of God's Spirit in our small groups this year, and people are growing, and I hope you have an incredible time of fun as well. Some of these groups, you guys are hysterical. I just crack up about some of you guys. Y'all are so fun. I'm excited about what God's doing. Also, I want to just give an encouragement to all the ladies. We have our registration opened up, available. So those who are watching online, ladies, if you're interested, you can get on our website as well and register through Facebook or also through our website. But ladies, we'd love for you to be a part of that as well. It's coming up right at the end of September. Love for you to sign up for that. And then also, I want to give a building report uh, to let you know where we're at. We are right now at $265,075.53, 44 of our goal for this year already. Come on, to God be the glory. We prayed off our property right at the end of June, and we're moving on and continue to go. And uh, I just want to tell you, thank you so much for being faithful. All those online, all those in this room, thank you so much for hearing the voice of God and saying, you know what, we're going to make a difference. We're going we're gonna to do this for Jesus Christ, and I'm excited about what God has going for us. Today, uh, really, I'm tying in this month's series with the same thought that I ministered on last, on last Sunday. We talked about uh, building a family that lasts. And one of the things I talked about is that we've really got to instill the values 
that Christ talks about for us uh, in our life so that we can begin to reap the blessing from it. So today I want to talk about the value of an apology. Uh, Biblically, it talks about repentance, but sometimes maybe it's a little bit easier to use a cultural word that makes a little bit more sense to present for present day. And I want to talk about the value of an apology. Anybody ever had to apologize because you just got it wrong yesterday? Right? The day before? Right? And you know what? Having that kind of spirit about our lives really changes everything. It changes how we're able to receive what God has to say or through his word. So let's dive into his word real quick. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 4, it says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, God, so much for the honor and privilege we have to be in the presence of the Lord. We thank you, God, that we're here not to just do a a religious ceremony or just to gather together, God, for the sake of, you know, appeasing relationships around us or people that we might know. We have come here to honor the name of Jesus, to show that through our action, we have faith in God that we are a people who are gathered to lift up our heart and that, Lord, that our heart is purely to worship you. And I pray as we gather together, Lord, in whatever room people are in right now online or in this room, we just pray in the name of Jesus that we are in tune to your voice and what you want to speak to our lives. And I thank you we will never be the same. Our hearts are receptive to what you want to say. And I thank you, Lord, that we're leaning in. And God, I thank you we'll be a people, Lord, that value, God, the, uh, the values that matter to you. And that, Father, I thank you that they'll be clear so that the next generation, God, will follow those values and live that up. In Jesus' name, we praise you. Amen and amen. So Jesus says, blessed are those who mourn. You know, and when I think of the idea of mourning, often we think of it in association with death or I'm crying or there's this deep overwhelmingness of loss, right, that we have on the inside. Uh, right now, I'm in a season of my oldest child is not living in our home. That, there's a little bit of mourning in there. Now, eventually, it probably will go to this, you know, like all our kids are growing up and they're out of the house in some way. But I'm not quite there yet, right, Mark? You know, I'm still at the point, Kelly, where in my heart, I'm like, I miss my baby, you know? And I'm sure you've never missed your baby right beside you ever it doesn't matter how old our kids get, we have such a, a love for them, right? So I'm kind of in that season, and some of y'all can relate, right, as well. And some of you are like, I don't know what that's like. Enjoy every moment right now, right? But Jesus isn't talking about a morning of death, right? He's talking about something so much deeper. He's talking about where we have a sorrow that really relates to sin, that we have a sorrow, a mourning on the inside of us that we're broken about sin on the inside of us. And when we lack that in our life, it really hurts us and it hurts the heart of God when we don't have a sorrow or see sin as he sees it. Paul the Apostle, he does such a good job. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8 through 10, he says this, For though I caused you sorrow by my letter. In other words, I gave you corrective words through my last letter to the Corinthian church. That's the perspective that he's, he's talking from. I gave you a letter. It brought correction, right? And I brought you sorrow. I do not regret it. Look at his heart. I don't regret it. And though I did regret it, right? Who likes to bring correction? Nobody. I don't like having the tough conversation, I don't like to feel like I'm bringing the correction or to seem like I know it all. Or how about the perspective of I've made some of the same mistakes and I'm seeing my kids or the relationship that I'm talking with make this, right? And Paul's talking to the church and he cares so greatly for the church over the fact that he could lose the relationship. He sees past that and says, I'm going to speak and speak from the heart of an apostle that cares for his kids, his brothers and sisters in Christ to not leave you the same. And so as I'm sharing this, 
I have regret, but yet I don't because I know on the end of it, you're going to see what I see and you're going to have the heart position that you need to have when it comes to the things of God. And then look at this, for I see that the letter caused you sorrow, mourning, same word, though only for a while. And look at this, and now I rejoice, not that you were made sorrowful, that wasn't the intent to make you sorrowful, but there was greater purpose in it, but that you were made sorrowful to the point of repentance. That's the aim. That's the aim. Jesus is communicating to you and I to have a sorrow that leads to repentance. And often what happens is the world has a focus of sorrow related to the circumstances after the event, right? Because when we sin, we experience the circumstance after, and often worldly sorrow is tied to that circumstance, right? It's tied to the effects of what happens with sin. But a godly sorrow is totally different. It's related to sin itself. It sees it in the view that Jesus sees it. So Jesus is stating, blessed are those who are sad over the presence of sin operating in their lives. And Jesus is saying, when you're sad to the point of sin being operational in your life, he said, and then the blessing comes as a result of it. Why? Because you have a brokenness. And God's trying to say, if we have a heart set where we see sin and value it the way he does, and we say, you know what? I'm repenting of this. I apologize for this. I don't want this in my life. I want this discarded out of me. When we have that kind of heart, he says, then the blessing comes on. What is that? It's his favor. It's his flow with his river, right? I, I, I say this analogy in the last couple of weeks. It's like when you sin, you're paddling upstream. And when you keep your soul in the spot, your emotions and your soul, and then in your spirit in a spot where you're like, ah, it wasn't that bad. Or I dial into it as the same way as the culture does, and we, and we just, we're negative, we, we feel bad for the consequences of it that's really not the heart of God. We have to value sin and ha- and in such a way that God totally detests it and we detest it. Now, I've got something for you. I've got, I've got some trash. Here's some trash. Anybody want trash? And it really is trash. In fact, can I give you a little backstory? I don't know if you want it. I thought, you know what, the safest trash I could probably get is the trash in the restroom where they dry their hands and they stick it in there. And I thought, I'm going to be safe, right? I've got to be honest. Are you ready? We're in the house of God. I reached in. I'm grabbing the trash. I'm like, it's just paper towels. And there was a tree, a pea trap thing in the trash bin. I'm like, ah! And I know God put it in there just for me for this moment. And I was like, ah, who does that? You don't put a pee trap or that urinal like splat. Y'all, women, y'all don't know this. Men splash. They splash. And so they had these covers to make it less splashy in the urinal. And so it was in the trash. And just that feeling I had when I grabbed it, I was like, oh, like that God wants you and I to look at trash that way too. That is so putrid, it's so awful. I don't even know why my my son's the trash boy. Like I was the trash boy growing up. Anybody can relate at all, right? So my job was to get the trash out. I was never supposed to walk by and just go, It's not quite full. If it looked like it was getting full, yeah, you press it down, shake it together before it runs over, you know? It's the opposite of the scripture, you know? And and so, you know, my, my mom would be on me like that. Make sure you put it away. My son, that's his job. He goes, he gets the trash, takes it out. I have to tell him every time, but that's his role, you know? You know, but you know why we don't want it in our house? Because it contaminates, it smells. Just like when I grab that in the bathroom and I'm disgusted for the rest of my life now. 
God wants us to view it in the same viewpoint. I'm shaking your hand today at the first person right there. <laughs> I scrubbed my hand so big. Thank God I, had a, I, had a, I was smart. I grabbed a paper towel, and I was grabbing the trash and putting it in the trash, and I grabbed that. Anyway, praise the Lord. We'll get off of that because I'm sick into my gut right now. But that's how God wants us to view sin. And I'm telling you, most of us in our life, you know, we deal with it properly. We're seeing it that way. But sometimes we're like, eh, it doesn't bother me that bad. But the problem is the trash isn't in a held bag that's sealed. It's not the trash, which is called sin, is not in a bag. The trash that's called sin is in our human spirit. And what we're saying to Jesus is, Jesus, it's okay for you to be in the garbage. And man, when, you, when, you, when it goes from in here to in here that you realize that my spiritual trash is what Jesus has to rummage through, that the Spirit of Christ, who we call the Holy Spirit, who interdwells in us, has to kind of walk through in there. And we're telling him, well, just deal with the trash. You and I would never, ever live in anything like that. That's what we're telling him. And so Jesus is saying is that when we deal with the trash that's in our spirit, we're saying, Holy Spirit, I don't want you to be rummaging through my human spirit and that I'm okay with the condition of my spirit in there. And what happens is, is a sorrow, a healthy sorrow comes over us and we view sin like trash and we discard it. And we're like, I don't want it anymore. That's called repentance. It's called an apology. It's when you and I say, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my trash, of my sin, of my filth. And he, and he does a promise for you and I. He says, and when you do that, he said, blessed are those and that they will be comforted. You know what that means? Like if I didn't take out the trash and I failed to do that with my life, you know, my, my reward from my mom was trouble. I was grounded from something. The last thing I ever wanted, Dixie, was for my mom to take away baseball. So I had an urgency because all I needed was one threat, and it was over the rest of my life. I didn't want baseball taken to me, from me. But what, what happens with us is, is that when we keep sin in our life, and we, it begins to not take baseball away, but it begins to affect all the relationships around us because we didn't deal with the garbage. And then we're passing off that garbage and that hurt and that pain and that anguish. And it's not just affecting you because that's how we think. Sin only affects me and it doesn't. It affects every relationship around us. Because if you have conviction in your heart and you actually have a heart that's where the Holy Spirit can speak to, that conviction will angst you and you will feel weird even around your relationships that you are connected to and you're committed to and it'll affect them and you, you are unknowingly connecting to them differently when the trash is out of you. And if, and if you don't realize that garbage affects other people, it does. My mom used to always say, Clay, Whatever you do, in other words, if you sin, you take your family through the garbage with you. Like if I sin, I take my garbage, my family through the garbage with me. And it started to change the way I think. And, and the other thought is, I don't want Jesus in my garbage. Now, I'm not saying that we're perfect and we don't sin. That's not what I'm saying. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. Anybody with me? But I think as you're in pursuit of Jesus, that looks less. It looks less and less. I have less garbage than what I used to have. I, 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 I garbage less than I used to. Does that make sense? I garbage less. I put up with it less. It's got a shorter duration. 
Heather and I, we, we have a shorter duration with our sin to each other. Does that make sense? We can't, I can't stand it. I can't stand it for like 30 seconds with God. It just drives me bonkers. I can't handle it. I'm like, because why? I can tell the Holy Spirit right then, inside my spirit, it just, I can hear him just get grieved, just uh, like that, and my heart just, anybody know what I'm talking about? That's your spirit, because the Holy Spirit's grieved. And because you sense that, you're still available to change. And I just want to encourage everybody who has felt that angst, that you've You've noticed the Holy, you grieve the Holy Spirit in that moment, and he's giving you the opportunity to make it right. And I'm telling you, when we make it right, Jesus' blessing is this, and you're going to be comforted. This is what it means, and the Holy Spirit will exhort you. He will ex- encourage you. And, and it's the opposite of what we think. You see, when we do it in the world, what happens is when we're honest and we say, hey, I did this, we're afraid of the, of the consequence that's going to follow we're afraid that that person is going to retaliate at us. But that's not how God works. The blessing is, is that when we're honest and we apologize and we're repentive, the opposite happens. He says, that's my kid. That's my son. That's my daughter. I knew you could do it. I knew you didn't want to keep the trash in there. I know you don't want me swimming through the trash. You want blessing and the flow to be to you. And you're turning your canoe around and you're flowing with the stream instead of up against it. And that's what God wants to do in our life because there's a blessing with it. And I'm telling you, there's no better feeling than to get rid of that, uh, of that um, quenching of the Holy Spirit, that, that feeling in your spirit where you've messed and, and just uh, you grieve the heart of the Holy Spirit. And when you get rid of that, you just say, Lord, I'm sorry, it changes just like that. Why? Because God knows that you're sincere about what you're doing. He knows it. Man, I just want to encourage everybody in this room, let's not allow the Holy Spirit having to rummage through the garbage in our human spirit. Let's deal with it right away. He wants to free us. So number one is Jesus is saying we are blessed when we have an inner anguish over the garbage we've allowed in our lives and repent. Amen? Number two is we are blessed when we mourn the garbage allowed in the world. We're, we're blessed when we mourn the garbage around in the world. Look, more and more people are mourning less and less, if at all, about sin. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, just this last week, I got a text like, boom, that there was going to be a drag show in Boise of minor children being on a stage for the LGBTQRSTUV community. And so, why in the world are we exploiting 11-year-olds that do not know what they're doing, and then we're having major corporations sponsor it that you and I shop at? It's an atrocity. And I'm sorry if I bother you, praise God, but I'd rather not have Jesus go through the garbage and call sin, sin. But what's the problem is, is that we're now legislating sin. We're now protecting it through law, and it's not okay. And now we might shake our head and say this and that, but I'm telling you, what garbage are you letting the Holy Spirit rummage through in your human spirit? Is it lust? You know, we tend to think that, you know, uh, addiction is something to do with something that paraphernalia or something. It may be totally different. I mean, we try to we try to point out these, right? And we go, those are the sins. No, 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 no. Look, what's filthy is lying. What's filthy is cheating. What's what's filthy is maybe you should hold back what you say, what you should. You think you should say. Sometimes we say way too much. We get ourselves in trouble. And we think we're okay because it's on our mind. We can't do that, can we? Because it's filthy, it's garbage, it's rummage, and then you're affecting the other relationships. So when we got that text, I'm just telling you, it should should bother us to our core. And we can't stay there 
you got to start making phone calls. Immediately, my wife got on the phone. We, uh, we were researching the numbers. They were given to us. We called Idaho Power. We said, this is not who you are. I told Heather, I said, I will go make power somehow. I'll dig in the ground and find my own, you know what I mean, hot water or something to make my own energy, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'll paddle on the bike and we'll have power for the day. You know what I mean? I mean whatever we got to do. I'm just saying, but we're going to say this isn't, right, this isn't right. Look, I've got too many brothers that are in high of power. That is not who they are. It's not what they represent. It's not what our state is. We're way better than this. We, don't, we are not going to be okay. You're pushing too far. The culture, this small little minute culture is pushing way too far against the Judeo-Christian values and exactly what our country is. And you cannot go against someone else's rights and freedoms so that yours can be propagated up. And I'm telling you people, you cannot just be okay with what happens. You have to say, no, that's not right. And you know how we did it? We just made a phone call and we didn't yell and we didn't scream and we didn't get belligerent and we didn't cuss. You know, we wanted to, but we didn't. I'm just kidding. But we said, this is not okay to exploit 11-year-olds to 17-year-olds that have no idea what they're doing. And you're opening the door for pedophilia and you're saying it's okay in our country. And it's wrong. When you're trying to legislate and lower the age limit for people to have sex with children down to 15, which is, and getting it lower and lower and lower, it's a crime. What are we going to do about it? What call are you going to make? Who are you going to talk to? We cannot stand by. Look, there are too many people that are afraid. Or just don't know what to do. I think most of it, we don't know what to do. You know what it, you know what it took? It took, what, three, five minutes to make that phone call? My mother-in-law did the same thing. Guess what? People all across the state started doing it. Doing it with Albertsons. Doing it with Zions Bank. Doing it with Auto Power. And I'm calling you on it. Praise God. And everybody else that was on that list. And it's not okay. Just sell your product, shut up, and don't push your politics. You know what I mean? Look, this is, <laughs> is that right? <laughs> like, man, we're going to get real. Look, we're not going to let another year go by and just let it be what it is. And, uh, man, we got to stand up for what's right. And, uh, man, I'm telling you, and it's not okay to live that way. Look, we're not going to say it's okay, and we're, gonna, we're not just going to say to people, say, hey, we've got to reprogram you and change you so you can think like we do. You're not going to let me, you're not going to reprogram me into being a person that changes sin into being something that's unsinful. Because I did not set the tone for it. I did not write the word. I did not write the Bible. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, wrote it through leaders. And you know what? We're going to follow that. It's a law that supersedes and it's higher than any other. This is what I'm saying. It's better than the laws we have in our country. It really protects people. It really cares for people. That's the kind of shepherd we have over our soul. That's the kind of shepherd that we have over our spirit. And so I just want to encourage you that if you're walking by the fellowship of God, if you're walking in his fellowship and you feel sorry for your sin and you have anguish for that sin, I'm telling you it's because you have an intimate relationship with him and it's beautiful. Jesus shows this brokenness towards sin that's happening in his world, that's happening in Jerusalem. In Luke chapter 13, verse 34, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets. Look what he did. He called it out. You know, he, he just said, he didn't say a good little message and just everybody go home. And he spoke to the culture and it resonated with the people. And they said, oh, man, I had that anguish too. Can you believe our country was like that? And, and I'm telling you that we've got to be in anguish for the condition that our, our, our country is in and begin to pray for it and, and change it and, and speak into lives and be the life change to people all around us. That's how we do it. And we don't, we don't burn anything up, break anything up. That's not how we are. But we change by love. We change by sharing truth. We change, we change it by making calls. We change it by being active. We change it by us saying, I'll be the leader. I'll, I'll lead. 
I'll do it. And I just want to encourage you, don't be afraid. Jesus said, that kills the prophets and stones those that sent her, those uh, sent to her. How often I wanted to gather you like children together, just as hens gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not have it. Can you imagine Jesus is right there in your city and you can't recognize it? I can't imagine being so blind by the garbage we allow in our life that we can't even recognize the Son of God. Psalm 119, 136 says, My eyes shed streams of water because they do not keep your law. I mean, David's talking about this brokenness inside. Like, oh, God, my eyes are streaming. I'm so sorry. I finally see sin as you do. It looks like garbage. And would you rid this out of our nation? Would you allow me to be a part of, of taking out the trash, you know, showing people, revealing it? And that's, that's what we're talking about today because if we can understand this value of mourning, we can understand this value of sorrow and this value of the apology, it'll change everything. We will be flowing with the Holy Spirit and be in connection. Joel 2, 12 says, yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart and with fasting and weeping and mourning and render your heart and not your garments. In other words, man, let it mess with your heart and make it right, make it pure, separate yourself from the garbage. Don't just rip up your clothes. That doesn't do anything. Look, just being angry doesn't do anything. Having anguish and praying and, and doing something about it, that's what changes it. And so I just want to encourage you. It's like, let's not applaud the culture. Let's not applaud those who who uh, now call sin as something to be truth or something to be rewarded. Let's have anguish over that and like pray for our country and nation and the nations of the world to turn from the direction they're going. Because if we do applaud what's in our culture, we'll carry the consequences as well. But I believe there's a remnant, the Bible says. There's a people that are separated, who are called by his name, that humble themselves, seek the face of God, Turn from their wicked ways. Amen? Let us be that group of people, man, that turn away from their wicked ways. Number three is, we are blessed when we apologize to others that we've hurt. We are blessed when we apologize, when we repent to others, when th those that we've hurt. Look, I don't know about you, but I've watched over the last two and a half years how many people have canceled one another. I've watched the sting of that result for our country, our nation, relationships. I've watched it with the church. I've watched the cancel culture happen in the church. And where we've canceled one another, we canceled Jesus. Things got more important. Safety, life, money, jobs have gotten more important. And the frequency that people have to God is less and less. And I'm trying to give a warning because the Bible talks about the great falling away. If you think that last two years is hard, you've got another thing coming. And I've watched how many Christians just walk away from the Lord in relationship. I'm telling you, people who don't go to church, it's a revealer of relationship. And people are like, oh, well, that's not true. That's not a truth. Thou shalt honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And he still hasn't changed it. Jesus still didn't change it. And people say he's the revolutionary of the, he never changed. He showed it with his lifestyle. Now we celebrate it on the Lord's day, the day that he rose. We call it Sunday. And I'm telling you, we can't shift and change because of fear of death, a fear of flu, a fear of disease. We can't do that. And you know, I've watched over the last few years, just this last week, I'm just giving an example. This last week on the CDC website, they put on there hydroxychloroquine is a, a usage now for COVID. And you know how many people they shamed and how many people they try to revoke their licenses who are actually practicing doctors. I'm just talking out loud right now. But you know how many people shamed one another and didn't even know the truth? And I saw people in the church, outside the church, point fingers and 
And I just want to tell you, there's power in an apology. And the CDC didn't apologize, and I don't expect the culture in this world to ever apologize for when they make a mistake. But I just want to tell you is that if you betrayed someone else, someone watching online, you betrayed somebody and you canceled the culture and you said this and cut the lines, I know you didn't know. I know you did it in your ignorance. You know how many things we do in our ignorance? We just get fired up. But the Bible talks about when you get fired up, that's when you need to cool down. You need to keep your mouth shut. Because as soon as you open up your mouth and you say something that you think, and then you're going to find out it's the wrong thing. Because I'm telling you, the devil wants to divide up as many people as possible, and he definitely wants to divide up the church. And I'm telling you, I love everybody. You're already forgiven. But I just want to encourage everybody, go make it right with somebody. Go tell doctors, you need to tell other doctors, I'm sorry. I got it wrong. You were right. Don't do what the CDC does. They just sneakingly put it in and never make a report to anybody. No, we need to apologize because that's kingdom living. And guess what? It'll be good with your soul. It'll be good with your spirit. You know, and and I I just wanna warn this, is that we don't join the culture in their sin. If they cancel, we don't cancel. If they belittle, we don't belittle. Are you, are they, if they silence, we don't silence. <laughs> There's only one person I'm silencing, and that's the devil. I'm silencing his voice. I'm, I'm silencing his energy toward, you know, moving in people's lives. I'm silenced. I'm, I'm just showing to the, to, the, to the church and to people who will be willing to listen is that there's a real enemy. He just wants to divide everybody up. And I'm just not going to play his games. Let's not play his games. There's such a short time. There's too many people that need to be reached for Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I want to take the trash out of my own life. I want to see the trash taken out of our communities. I want to see the trash taken out of our state. We have too great of a state to allow trash in here. I'm not calling it people. I'm calling sin trash. That's what I'm calling out is sin is trash. It doesn't belong in our human spirit. Let's, let's repent. Let's have anguish, right? Let's value the heart to apologize to God for our country, for the world, and for the mistakes we've made, amen, when we sin. And when we get it right, man, we're paddling with the Lord. And we have trash-free living that doesn't have a, a urinal splash thing in it. Where is God? <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much that we see sin differently than we ever had before. It is gross. We are so sorry. Forgive us. Forgive us, God. Forgive your church. Forgive us how we slandered one another. Forgive us how we slandered the church to church. Forgive us how we slandered brother to brother sister to sister. Forgive us, God, how we've slandered, Lord, how we've allowed sin and and not anguished over it in our own state, in our own country, in the world. Would you forgive us for not seeing it as it is? It's pure garbage that we're saying it's okay for Jesus just to wallow through. That it's okay for the Holy Spirit to just deal with it. And we don't want to deal with it anymore. With heads bowed and eyes closed and Right now is a moment, opportunity for you just to ask the Lord, Lord, today I ask you to forgive me. Today I want to see the trash taken out. Will you forgive me? Forgive us, God. Forgive us. Forgive our land. Forgive our country. Forgive the world that it doesn't see it, Lord. Would you remove the blinder, Lord? The blinders that the enemy has put on them to blind the hearts of people from seeing you. And may many people come to know the Lord. With heads bowed and eyes closed, I just want to give an opportunity for people online and in this room. If you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I'm telling you it's the most important decision of your life. The goal is that, Satan's goal is that you don't take out the trash. 
that you don't repent, that you and I just say, no, it's good, it's, it's all good, and we know inside our human spirit it's not good. And I just want to encourage you, like all of us in this room, and I'm a pastor, and I, I still repent. And I, and I want to keep on keeping that soft heart. But maybe you're in this room or online, and you say, Pastor, I've never given my life to Jesus. I just want you to know he's the one that deals with the trash better than anybody. That when you and I, we have anguish over it, and we ask him to forgive us, when we apologize, he frees us from sin. And he exhorts us, and he says, you're my son, you're my daughter. You have value. You're not trash. You're my son, you're my daughter. If you're in this room or online watching right now, and you say, Pastor, I want to receive Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I'm going to lead two groups of people. One group that have never made that decision. The second group, it's your first time. It's your, uh, you're re- returning back to God because you walked away from the Lord. If that's you, would you lift up your hand right where you're at in this room and online? You say, Pastor, I want to receive Jesus Christ to be the Lord of my life. Amen. Church, will you gather with me and let's pray with these people? Say, God, I come to you and I don't want trash in my life anymore. That trash is sin, and I see it differently. It's got a stench, and I don't want that stench on me. And I ask you to forgive me. Forgive me of my sins. They are many. And who I've sinned against, it's you. And I don't want to sin against you anymore. And from this day forward, I'm giving you my life. I make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. I believe he's the son of the living God who was on the cross, who had all my sin and all my shame and all my trash on him. And he gladly carried it. And he died on that cross. He was placed in a tomb. And on the third day, he rose above my trash and the trash of this world. And I give my heart to him. And from the From this day on, whatever you want me to do, I'm going to completely serve you. And I ask you, Jesus, to make me a son, make me a daughter, so I can know my value in you and begin to find out the destiny that you have for me. And I pray that in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen, amen. Come on, can we give these wonderful people a hand this morning? Hey, if you prayed that prayer in this room, would you do me a favor? Inside your worship guide. There's a connection card. Would you take the time to fill it out online? You can take your time, if you would, to fill out that connection card. We'd love to connect with you, help you in a resource. We have the 10 Steps to Christ book that tells you about your faith in Christ. We have small groups centered around that that, uh, particular book. We'd love to help you. And if you need a Bible, we'd love to resource you with the Bible as well. Come on, one more time. Give a hand to all those people. Amen. Hey, we're going to... Honor God in our giving as you're preparing to give. Just want to say to everybody in this room, thank you for being so faithful. Y'all are outstanding in how you give. That's how we're able to do what we're doing as a church and ministry. I don't know about y'all, but I'm believing God for great things. And God's moving in our city. He's moving in our state, in our country. And I thank God for what he's doing for in Believer's Church as well. So thank you for your faithful giving. There's a few different ways that you can give. You can give in the buckets this morning. That's where you can put your prayer cards as well that are at the bottom of the connection cards, as well as your connection cards. Also, you can text uh, the number 84321. And then where you would enter a message in to somebody, you put in a mount there and then send it. And then it'll, sh- it'll send you how you can uh, connect your text to giving through your phone and make that easy as well. Also, available uh, are um, envelopes that are inside your worship guide as well, and you can give on believerschurchidaho.com as well, all right? Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, so much for the message and the opportunity to give to you. We pray that you receive all the tithes and the offerings, God, given, Lord, as a worship unto you and thanking you for what you've done. In Jesus' name, everybody said? Amen. Love you guys so much. Hey, we got a couple announcements and we'll let you go. God bless you so much. Thank you, Pastor Clay. Church, can we give God a hand clap real quick as we wrap up with our our 830 service, guys? It's so good to see you. So as Pastor was saying today, relationship, relationship, God, it's it, all of these announcements have in some way something that you can do to get, grow closer with God and with each other. So just kind of starting in order, we have Wednesday morning prayer every Wednesday. 
7 a.m. We're here in this room and we're praying. If you can join us, thank you. If you can do it remotely, that works too. It doesn't even have to be Wednesday. So tonight we have youth. It's gonna, the doors are opening at 5.30 and the event, it starts at 6. It is motion night tonight. I hear it is going to be a lot of fun for all of those youth guys. They have a life-size game of sorry that they're going to play. There's worship. It's a wonderful time. It's a safe time. It is a fun time. It is a chance for the next generation of young adults to move into that with their own relationship, with their own service, with their own uh, friendships and relationship with God. So if you have any or know of any youth, try to send them tonight. Doors open at 530. It starts at 6. It's appreciated when you come back to pick them up. So... Moving into next week for the over 60 crowd, we have a barbecue event for you guys. It's going to be a lot of fun. The details should be on the screen, but if you need or have questions, talk to Alcee Brasha or Tammy Ecker. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's Friday the 16th, and it's, it's just going to be a fun time getting together, meeting um, that, that group as a whole just to connect, to learn about each other, to learn about God, and to have a ton of fun. Towards the end of the month, one of the last events that we have in the current month is the ladies' retreat. Yes! No, guys, it, it is so, you know, I don't think you understand how much fun it is that they have up there. It's in the Sawtooth Mountains. It is a blast. It's at the very end of September, just the very beginning of October. It's a couple of days. They get to go up there, be, a, uh, be ministered to, grow closer to God, closer to each other, and just have just a wonderful and fantastic time. If you have any questions, speak to somebody on staff or give us a call during the week about how to get signed up for all of that. That is all the announcements that I have for you guys. There's a singles group event tonight. If that applies to you at 4 o'clock, check that out. And if you have any questions, please talk with Chastity there in the back. I forgot about that one. So, guys, 8.30, thank you so much. As you guys are leaving today, please greet the 10 o'clock crowd. Give them something to look forward to. Share the love of Jesus. Guys, I pray that you have a blessed day, a God-filled day, and an encounter for yourself with him. Thank you so much for coming. You guys are dismissed.